gotten that twice already. Oh, you look different in person. Um, you're you're much chubbier in person, or you're much this, or you're much that, or you or I didn't realize you were that tall. That's a good one. I, I'm I'm never you know uh, angry about that one because I'm I'm six foot four and a very you know people don't people don't see that I'm mad you're tall. Six four. Yeah, I'm six four. Cannot tell on the video. At yeah, 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 yeah. You this in thou. I'm sitting yeah, here. Like, listen, I mean, if I don't know how to explain, it. I'm not, I just the angle of the camera, I can bend it. I don't know what to do. I'm not going to stand. It's still not going to be it. Angle from the bottom. Like, it's so you like, know. it's like, I got to go like this. I got to get a, the, the worm's eye view. It's like, yo, yo soy fuerte y alto. Nah, I'm, I'm tall, bro. Um, you're, you're much chubbier. Uh oh. Watch this. I thought I blocked it out. Just give me one quick second. No worries, no worries. It's okay. That's like so, the, the ghost of Rick. Yeah, the recording on YouTube was throwing me off. Not the... So we are live on YouTube. Welcome to the Rick A Show, season six. Woo! It's supposed to be Rick A Show with Craze. Oh, he made it on <laughs> Yo, buzzer beater. I was buzzer beater. <laughs> I was just about to bash Craze. Yo! Oh, What's oh, my God. My oh, my God. I was like, yo. Oh, let's start all over. Welcome to the show, the Rick H Show with Craze Boogie and Jayla. Yes. Our guest today is Ruben yes. Dario Ramirez. You know him on Instagram as R by Dario. Welcome to the show. Season six is finally here. Good to be here, guys. This is good energy to be starting the season with. I'm not happy. I'm happy with all these vibras right now. Mmm, tamo aquí, tamo aquí, tamo aquí. Hey, <laughs> crazy, you made it just in time. Literally, por un pelito, crazy, por un pelito. Oh, <laughs> crazy, crazy was cleaning his his bathroom before his mom beat his ass. That's what happened. Estaba limpiando. Ponle cloro, coño. And then that was it. That was it. Hey. Actually, you know what the truth is? He saw my text. He's like, "Oh, Rick, text me." Then you got the Jayla, the. Crazy! Wait, wait, yo, in the wise words of Ja Rule, I'm not always there when you call, but I'm always on but time. But I'm always on time. <laughs> <laughs> My man pulled give up. Ja, the, hashtag the, the for ja Rule. Ja. Started by hashtag Crazy Boogie. Ja. Ay, ay, so ay. we got Ruben on the show. Uh, if you haven't seen his stuff on Manhattan Times, if you haven't followed him on Instagram, if you're not from uptown. If you, you do not and know anything about Dominican culture, all right. So go to Art by Dario on Instagram. Check out his pieces. The man yeah. is dope. Uh, you, I'm gonna let you. him speak for himself. Who is Ruben, by the way? Wow. Uh, I feel like that's a two-hour conversation <laughs> with my therapist. <laughs> that's tough. Yo, who? Quién es Ruben? And why is Ruben? Uh, but <laughs> yeah, my name is Ruben Ramirez or Ruben Dario Ramirez. Um, I was born and raised in Washington Heights uh, mm. on the block of 170th between St. Nicholas and Audubon. That's um, dope. Yeah, yeah. I've been, I've been a, a Heights dude all my life. Um, I am an artist, a di both a digital and a traditional artist here in Uptown. I currently reside in the Bronx, even though I'm like literally right next to the Heights because I'm, I'm right Still on the Uptown. bridge. Yo, I'm, 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 it was a compromise, yo. Like my wife and I got married. She's from the boogie. I'm from the Heights. I begged her to go to the Heights, but you know, the, uh, the money's going right okay. now. I got married. I'm from Watch the Heights. I got married to a woman from Queens. Hey. Now I live in Queens. So. Now you live in Queens. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I get it. I so, understand. You know, it worked. You know, <clears> How'd you get into art, man? Yeah, man. So I got into art really young. Uh, when I was four years old, my mom, uh, told me that she wanted me to be an artist, right? Now, mind you, I'm built to be a baseball player, so my dad wanted me to be a baseball player, but my mom did not. Um, so I am an artist, again, you know, female power wins. Um, but I, so at the age of four, she got me like a paint set. Um, she got me all this stuff and, you know, what, what parents normally do. Uh, but what happened was that some of my like daycare teachers said, hey, he's actually, he's actually really good at this. So she continued to put me in programs. One of them was actually part of Alianza Dominicana. I don't know if you guys remember that, Joe. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Alianza. They're on 160. 
65th now, I think. They're 165th, but at that time they were in uh, IS um, one one was it IS 153, the one on 182nd. Yeah, yeah, it's a middle school on 182nd, um, and they had a dude there that was teaching people how to uh, oil paint or how yeah paint with oil. Um, and I was like, bro, I, I kid you not, I was like 10 or 11 years old in a classroom full of adults. Um, and I was there because I just I just loved it. Uh, then from there, I went to the high school of art and design on 57th and 2nd. Um, and there I uh, they ran the school. It was a specialized school. So they ran it sort of like a college. So I did my uh, major in advertising and, in, and then a minor in cartooning, which is funny oh, to wow. say. Right. Uh, right. Because you're like, you're in high school, bro. That doesn't count. Uh, but I did learn a lot there. Uh, and then from there, there was a hiatus, a huge hiatus, because I made a decision uh, when I saw that, you know, when I felt like art couldn't give me a career, art wouldn't be able to pay my bills. I made a decision to let go of art. And instead of going to SBA, um, I ended up going to Baruch to study business. Um, so I did that for Which a while. It's a good school. It is a good school. Very good business. A, it is a good school for business, um, but not for art. Um, <laughs> no, not at all. So I, you know, I did that. Then I just did traditional uh, jobs and stuff like that. You know, I kept my career going. I ended up being at bank, working at Bank of America, um, wearing suits all day, having a decent, decent salary, and I was freaking miserable. Miserable. Perform the meal. Yo, yo, I, every day was a cortavena situation. I was just, I was done. Like I, I did not want to be there at all. Um, and what happened was that again, is, is this idea that I didn't think I could, I could make money um, or make a living for myself and for my family, especially um, being an artist. But then, uh, and this leads me to you know the people who inspired me. Uh, I one of my friends, Adalis Martinez. Uh, rest in peace. She actually passed away recently. Uh, she came to me and she was like, yo, you know that you're really talented and you can you can make a living doing this. And I was like, ah, oh, man, like, I don't know. I, I, I don't think I, I can do it. But then I would see her work and, you know, what she did with book covers. And she was, you know, she was getting paid pretty nicely. Uh, she was working for like HarperCollins and stuff um, as a book designer. And she won New York times best book design cover of the year, multiple times as a Dominican woman, which is ridiculous. She's dope. She's dope. She's super dope. Um, so you can check her stuff out. Like her IG is still up for right now. Um, but you can check her stuff out and I've done stuff with her. So, you know, any book covers you see on my page, it was in partnership work and collaboration with her. Um, so she gave me a shot at my first book cover and also like just we, in the conversations we had, just looking at you know artists uptown and the voices that were there and, and saying hey there's there's like a there's a gap there's something something's missing there and you you can stand in the gap you can be there it doesn't mean that there aren't other artists it's yeah. just like she just showed me that there was space um, to do something there um, along with my wife who was mad encouraging along with other people around me who were super encouraging and they believed in me so I think it was in December of 2018. Uh, that I made the decision to start taking, uh, doing art seriously again. Um, and my first painting was a painting of my son. And that, you know, it was a really pretty one. I, you know, I'll show you guys later on if you want to see that. If not, oh, yeah. on IG. Yeah. Of course. Um, but I did a painting of my son. And from then on out, that was it. Like, I just kept trying to find my voice. Um, and funny enough, I ended up finding my voice uh, with a, a cartoon style that I actually used. Um, when I was dating my wife, I would like write love letters to her and always have cartoons. I know, I mean, I knew I was gonna slay Jayla. No, right no, I she's think done. That's yeah. Dope. Yeah, she's done. Yeah. I think that's dope. I think that's dope. No. I, would, I wrote her a letter every month. That's so, dope. so we that's dated. Free, that's free game for all you dudes out there. No, doing free that. game. Yeah, <laughs> free game. That's what's up. Free anymore it's the little simple things and i'm sure she had them all in a box i'm yep. sure she had them we all still got the box we still got the box it's, it's in our bedroom she has all of them um but i did that for two years so those 24 letters uh and then the last letter was for the day that i asked her to marry me so that was the engagement oh, that's but yeah. that style that style i, I you know, like all her friends would see it and everybody would see and be like yo this is crazy you should do something with this this is pretty cool and I'd be like, guys, it's just a cartoon or something. Nah, 
But as I was finding my voice, I went back to that. And I'm I, just letting I like you know right music. now that there are women like me in this world that believe in ma like magic and like, there's that one guy out there that would do something right, right, right. like that. You did not help my case in being the first one to be like, no, <laughs> no, yeah. you're not writing me love letters. I don't want nothing from nobody. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, they're out there. They're for sure. They're out there, right? It's just you, you know, gotta you be gotta, patient and look. You gotta be patient and look, and you gotta, and you'll be surprised. Some of the dudes you think would never do something like that are the ones that do it. Do. They'll do it. Yeah. Also, what am I giving? What yeah. happened? Also, ask for one. Put that shit in the universe. Man. Somebody might do it for you. There you go. Yo, hey. listen, you put that on IG right now and your DMs will be flooded with the best pictures. Mural. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be great. Now, now hey. I got the itchies, y'all. Like, nah. Bye. I'm, gonna put it on I'm good. I'm good. Story. That Jayla wants a man to write her letters and love and cook for me and give me back massages. That is good. Wow, Hesu. What's your okay, after I was married, I married for love. I have a beautiful five-year-old daughter. Nice. I went through the separation, going through the divorce thing. And nice. when you get to a certain point in your life, you know where you have certain expectations of things of, that you're willing to before you're like, oh, I hope, or you're like, you know, you hope for the best. When you kind of stumble, busted your ass, scraped your knees and your face, you're standing up and you're like, oh no, I ain't falling that crack no more. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> no, I get you. I get you, girl. You gotta, you, gotta, you know what you want at this point. Gamer with that one. Tell him. <laughs> gamer. So, what's your creative process like, Ruben? Uh, so, my creative process, honestly, I just sit down and I think about my childhood and my experience. Um, I know that some famous artists once said, you know, you have to paint or draw what you see. Um, and then for me, it's write like, what you know, that's what they yeah, or like write what you know. For me, it's, you know, draw what you've seen with the N at the end, right? Like what, what I remember, like the things that I'm nostalgic about, um, the good and the bad. And I feel like in my work, we've seen a lot of the good um, and, I'm, and we'll, we'll continue to see that. But as later on, like the projects that I have lined up, we'll see some of the not so great parts, um, right? But they're still part of what I grew up with, right? Like of my community, and just the, the story of what it means to grow up in the Heights and in Uptown. Um, so, you know, that's, that's my process. I literally, I'm like, man, what, what's something that I, you know, I saw growing up or that really uh, sticks out to me or something that I saw when I was walking to the Super Associated, right? Or when I was going to Z-Town or whatever, right? And then I would say, okay, you know, I saw these two, I saw a couple with one girl look, you know, was very well dressed and yeah, and the other dude was looking fly and it looked like they were going to a lounge or you know to la marina or whatever that's what i'm going to draw so you'll see that you know in, in a cartoon or if one day i'm thinking about my friend's mom mopping the floor as we played video games you know that's what inspired sabado right the the picture of the woman mopping it was because i remember his mom doing that and we were just chilling um so you know those little things where you know we we have so many shared experiences and we feel like, you know, maybe it's too niche or because we're a minor, like a minority minority that we're not just like Latino. It's like we're Dominican Latino, which is my chiquito, my diferente. It's like, no, you'd be surprised how many people like hit, hit me up on that picture alone. And they weren't Dominican at all. They were Puerto Rican. They were Haitian. They were, you know, uh, black. And they said, man, I relate to that so much because we have some like such a shared experience, a much bigger shared experience than we think. Um, so for me, that's part of the process, just looking back at my past and saying, hey, this is what I went through. This is what I saw. I'm going to put it down there. If people relate, great. If they don't, that's OK, too, because there's stuff that I'll put up. You like, gente dicen, ah, es una para mí. I was going to like, ask, <laughs> is that something that you get? Um, like, do you get a lot of people? Like, So for me, like I'm Central American. I'm Costa Rican, Salvadorian, mm -hmm. but I to me, I feel most relatable to, even though I grew up with Colombians and, you know, different cultures, to me, the Dominican culture is the closest to what I can, by the way I was raised, click mm -hmm. to on a Costa Rican side for me. Because again, like you said, we come from small countries. There's not a lot of that. Have mm -hmm. you seen what has been one of the countries that kind of like 
threw you the most off guard. Like, oh shit, like, <laughs> dang, we speak the same, like, the same like visual, like that's cool. Yeah, um, I had somebody from Brazil hit me up. Okay. That, that was random. Um, but then I would also say like the Southern black community, right? Not the, not dudes from Brooklyn. Cause of course we grew up the same way. Um, but oh, yeah. a lot of people from the South, from Atlanta, uh, will look at, look at our stuff and be like, Hey, you know, it reminds me of when I was in the city or when I was in Chicago or something like that. So I think that where I was like, Oh, hmm, interesting. So as an artist, when you sit down, do you prefer to draw <clears throat> a sketch or paint? I mean, there's many forms of- um, I mean, I don't, I don't think it's a craze. What were you gonna say, craze? Do you use uh, more like digital painting versus like, uh, cause I mean, most of the stuff for yours, I would assume probably Procreate, right? Yeah, so I, uh, I think I can answer both. So I use Procreate a lot. It's my main tool when, I, when it comes to putting stuff out there on IG or on my personal uh, brand. Um, but when it comes to, you know, stuff that I do for clients or commission work, uh, that's digital, I'll switch it. I'll use both. I'll use Procreate and I'll use Photoshop and Illustrator because, you know, for, for the sake of, um, format and corporations like those files, you have to send it out that way. Um, in yeah. terms of my personal preference between digital and traditional art, depending on the, it depends on the day. Uh, there are days where I'm like, man, I want to paint, so I'm going to paint. And that's what yeah. I'm going to do. That's my main problem because I, I, you know, I draw, paint, and do different things too. But I, I'm not indecisive about it. Like, I, I'll decide that I want to do spray paint, and then I'll start fucking with spray paint, and it don't really feel good, and it feels like I'm not really doing the shit that I want to do. And yeah. so then I'll get away for like a week, two weeks, and then I'm like, all right, fuck it, I'm just gonna draw and procreate. To his crib, and I'm like, yo, this is fire. You should continue doing more for me. And he's yeah, like, bro, but that's part of the process. Literally, you sound like every single one of us, every artist. Hey, I'm at ping pong. I see me more. It's, oh man, I was doing this for this week. I don't know. It didn't come out hot. And then your boy shows up and says, oh my gosh, this piece changed my life. Um, and that that's just part of the game. I think, you know, what I'm, what I've been learning is that finding your voice means that you just have to build consistency, right? It's like, you know, I don't know if you guys took a communications class. But in order to be good at speaking publicly, you have to speak publicly. You have to talk, right? And if you want to find your voice as an artist, you just got to put stuff out there and you have to do stuff and be consistent, right? It doesn't matter if you're doing it with spray paint. It doesn't, do, it doesn't matter if you're doing it with a ballpoint pen, right? Or con lo que tu quiera. But as long as you're being consistent about it, you're going to find your voice and you're going to find your style. And once you hit that style, right? Like if you're trying to transition from you know, just expressing yourself and enjoying the craft to, hey, I want to see if this can bring me some kind of um, monetary gain or like I can, I can, you know, uh, live off of this. Then at that point, that's when you say, okay, how do people respond? And that's where the marketing aspect comes in. But like, how is my audience responding to this? Like, what is it that is hitting uh, for people? And then when you find the, the, the styles in your repertoire that like do that for people, then you can continue to hone that in and prune that in, and craft that more so that eventually you'll be like, hey, I have, you know, not only can, do I enjoy doing this, right? Like I enjoy drawing cartoons. It's still a meal. I'll do that. If, if I didn't make a dime off of it, I would be doing that anyway. I'd be doing it for my sons. I'd be doing it for, you know, I, I clearly a cartoon I like you, uh, right. you grew up sketching. I, exactly. I grew up sketching. So I'm, I'm doing that, right? Well, what's a cartoon though, or, or a figure or something that you, uh, because I know for Craze, he had a lot of different uh, growing up. Like, I personally would do Ninja Turtles. Uh huh. And, and I, would, I would always start at the abs. So they would have these brolic abs, and then it would be disproportionate. Well, like, our, like, the Ninja abs would be bigger than everything else? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, like we had like, uh, I think like X Men, you know, I also was really into like, yeah. I was also really into like the Nickelodeon style. Oh, nice. Um, so I, I really, really fucked with like that Rugrats, you know, like uh, high, um, Monsters. What, what is it? Hey, uh, monsters. Real Monsters. By the way, today's Tommy's oh. birthday. Tommy Pickles turns 30 today, y'all. Oh, e <laughs> Tommy <laughs> Pickles, that's great. Turns 30 that's today. I feel old as hell. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, for, so, all right. So in terms of uh, cartoon influences, 
Are you a I'm Dragon not, Ball Z guy? Because there's a lot of Dragon Ball Z guys. You, you can, you can, Jayla, Jayla read me like a book. I was reading, I was drawing <laughs> Dragon Ball Z all yeah, Dragon- day. So this is this is the thing, right? Like I was a nerd. If I me, in order in order for me not to get my butt beat, right, in school, what I would do was I would draw for the bullies. And I would literally like draw Dragon Ball Z figures and they'd be like, yo, this is dope. And I'm like, uh-huh, uh-huh, no me toque, toma. <laughs> um, and I would, I would draw that. So I started there, but then I started transitioning to more realistic stuff, which is weird because you would see me at like the, the library on 179. Uh, I think it's 179, the one next to the bakery between Audubon and St. Nicholas. Yeah. Um, and I'd be in that, in that library getting all the art books about like, you know, uh, anatomy right a real life still life and and this is right in middle school right so at a young age and i would just take that and i would just draw as much as i could um and then yeah that was that was it but i was a, i was a big nerd so a lot of anime uh a lot of tsunami uh cartoon network uh also a lot of boomerang so a lot of bugs bunny a lot of daffy duck a lot of that kind of stuff so yo hell yeah yeah for sure and a bar- I feel like the like the Hanna Barbera uh, cartoons, like the yeah, Bones, mm-hmm. um, Scooby Doo, yeah. I think, I think that was Hanna Barbera too. That marathon one, what the fuck was it called? Like some, some derby type shit. I local, you know. Oh, with the disaster in it. Uh, yeah. I know. Damn crazy too. Right? They had everybody, bro. Every everybody was in that shit. It was like it was like fucking a uh, Mario Kart of Hanna Barbera cartoons. They had, oh, it was a rat race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That the Jetsons were in that joint too. Todo el mundo. Bro, like fucking uh, Magilla Gorilla, all of them. Magilla Gorilla. That sounds, like a rap, that sounds like a rap, name, a rap name now. Yo, I'm dating yeah. myself. Everybody that's like under the age of like 25 is like, what the fuck are they talking about? No, HBO Max, for those of you watching this show. They got has- the shit. Ooh. They got Warner Brothers. They got a lot of stuff on Ooh. it. So. Who got the link? Who got the link? Because I'm not paying for that. Who got the <laughs> link? <laughs> so what's a piece that you worked on that, like, for you is one of your favorites? Uh, what piece did I work on? Um, hmm, on my way. I think uh, Caught in the Crossfire is probably my favorite one so far because of the season that we're in. Um, and that's the one with the little boy holding the Black Lives Matter sign in the middle. Um, and the cops on one side and then the media on the other with, you know, a white anarchist uh, just taking a selfie. Um, and I think that for me, it was it was a moment because I just I had read the news and I just saw so much craziness um, that was happening. Uh, and that's still happening now. But at, at one point a few months ago, it was it was at an all time high. Um, and the entire time as I'm reading the news, I'm reading CNN, I'm reading like uh msnbc routers at one point i pulled up fox i was just i wanted to see all the stuff and i was like amazed at the fact that they had like the, they were looking at the same story and having completely different realities and missing the point completely, completely. Like missing missing the point completely and it was one of those moments where i was like man you know i'm dominican so i'm black in one sense but at the same time the black experience like the american black experience you know, it just, I was really hurt by that because it's just like, how more, like, how much more do they have to deal with and then just be used in a sense, right? Either to be blamed for what's, you know, all the wrongs that's happening or to be used as like media fodder so that people like media companies can get clicks, you know, based on their suffering. And I was just like, man, this is, this is too much. Um, And, you know, the, I feel like a lot of people have interpretations for that piece. Uh, for me, I felt like I just, ex- I, I drew out what I, I thought I was seeing, which was, you know, just the black and brown bodies being used by both sides in some way, shape or form. And, and, and they're, they're not being listened to, so. Same thing happened when Colin Kaepernick Neil. Mm-hmm. Into- Yo, that's the whole story. The, the, the whole nothing- kneeling thing, the whole kneeling thing was them trying to like, be respectful when you find out that he literally kneeled because his boy who was part of the army said yo don't do anything crazy kneel it's a show it's a sign of respect and people still get tight like what what come on bro so i don't don't know because he was not gonna stand for a country where there was no equality and they said oh he's against the military oh my goodness no sheesh it's it's 
it's a diversion tactic when people don't want to solve issues and they just want to, you know, put distract. The drug, they'll distract, they'll make that's something the anonymous. Yeah. That, that's the, the time we're living in, the time of distractions. Yeah. Like everybody distracted me from the truth, bro. Like what's actually going on. Yeah, man. It's it's sad. But I think that as artists, craze, uh, it's our job to to display yeah. that and to to paint the narrative and to use our voices, right? Or our skill set to be able to put that out there and, you know, not be afraid that our voice might not be heard because X, Y, Z, who cares? Your voice will be heard by somebody. Somebody's going to see that. Yo, why is it like was talking about, I just put it on our G story. If you want to see it, there's a direct link to it. Um, it's called caught in the crossfire. Um, in our show, we like to do a little game called praises challenge. Oh, Thank God oh. he got here on time. Thank God he got here on time. Well, for our people at home, crazy every up. episode, crazy challenges are. Oh, Ruben's ready. I saw the pad. Uh oh. You got ready? I don't think I got. You're the little papi. Uh oh. Are you gonna disqualify? Get this Where's your Where's your pad? By the way, I'm only on mute because the ice cream truck is literally not moving. Oh, the wow. whole time. Hold on, hold on. Let me get a marker here. Hold on. Hold on. Hey, how much time should we give him? 10 seconds? 15 seconds? Um, give him 15 seconds. I'm going to do 15 five. only because 15 is like one of my favorite numbers because I like multiples of five. Even though 10 counts. Maybe but the five ice cream truck sound inspires Ruben. I think he did something with the ice cream truck. I did, I did something with a chimney truck. Oh, I yeah. With the, something with the ice cream I'll use that as the cover, yeah. <laughs> So my daughter was born in Florida. So I've been, I brought her to New York. We've been here for like three weeks for the New York experience. So she's had Mr. Softies. I've taken, she's ran through nice. a fire hydrant. Nice. <laughs> that, like, that's like the baptism for New Yorkers. That's yeah. like, you need you. <laughs> so as a, as a mom that always wanted to be raised here and my parents, I was born in Long Island, but they raised me in South Florida. Um, because again, they're just trying to be protective and they're trying to, you know, give us the best chance and everything. But my rebellious, my rebellious ass has always, as an adult, found my way back. Like I've lived in Harlem. I've lived in the Bronx. I've lived up in the Heights. I've lived in Queens, like on purpose. Like they didn't want to give it to me when growing up. I'm going to get it all as an adult. And now I'm, I'm bringing my daughter. I do what I want. I do huh? what I want. <laughs> okay, I do what I want. <laughs> I do whatever, whatever, I do what I want. Acting Yo, like so this segment is called Crazy oh, Challenge. I'm ready. I'm ready. So for Crazy Challenge this week, we have an artist in the building, and Crazy Artist himself. We're going to have a doodle duel. So back in the ages, two men would stand opposite each other with a gun, <clears throat> with a gun, and What's the quickest to draw would win. So 15 seconds will go. Jada's going to check the time for us. 15 seconds. In paces and shoot. And she's going to let us know when to start. Whoever does the best piece wins. Oh, what? What are, you, what are we doing? That's so sick. Oh, yeah, that's right. You guys got 15 seconds. Ready? So, Jada, what, 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 or what will they be drawing? What will he be drawing? Oh, ice cream truck. Ice, ice cream, cream truck. truck. Let's do it. That's Three. mad ass bitches for 15 seconds. Two. One, I got, I'm giving you some inspiration with me. No. Everything, my friend. <laughs> yeah, we started already. Yeah, 15 seconds, crazy. Oh. The best ice cream truck you can give me, music and all. With the fucking music? All right, time's up. What? What? <laughs> no. seconds, guys, not 15 minutes. All right, I'm, I'm done. I'm done too. Oh, but I, yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. The way we're gonna work this out. Okay. Dang. Dang. I already know. I, I got my winner. I got. I got. I got went, my he went through the middle. Justin has to vote too, though. Justin has to Please, vote. Let me see. Fair. Justin's gonna vote also. Oh. Crazy. Let me see yours again one more time, bro. So that nigga added another dimension. I already know. <laughs> oh yeah. All right. Ready. Uh, I think. I Crazy, you're my boy and I love you, but Ruben's, Ruben's the ice cream. Truck. Bro, bro, I'm sorry, but I might have to go with Craze on this one only because oh. Ruben's looks kind of like a Tonka truck. So I did a monster ice cream truck. 
Let me Come see. on, girl. I got I got sons. I got you know they right. they out here with the truck. They're watching uh, monster <laughs> trucks all the time. So Justin, I want to see Ruben. I don't know. You're the tiebreaker, Justin. Wait, hold nah, on. I can't be the tiebreaker. Yes, you are. I think you Yo, I, Come on, Justin. I'm gonna keep it a buck. I feel like three, it's just three dimensional. But and I'm also, Craig's got a music note in the corner. Is that is that he excellent? does? He does have a music note. Yeah. He got inspired by the music. I'm gonna have Damn, to. Damn, yeah, I'm about to go with Ruben. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, no. I feel you. The shit is that that nigga's cold was three dimensional. <laughs> it, it, I mean, it just had that Tonka truck vibe. That's all right. That's all right. Hey, hey, yo, I that's a dope run. It's all not... subjective. To each his own. Hey, do you guys want to run one more? Do you want to run one more? One more. All right. One more. All right. One more. Now let's do one more. Let's do it. Ruben posted, uh, I think it was four, four pictures today. Uh, the first one was a hookah. Craze is known as the hookah. Oh, guy. Shit, that's right. Jayla, give me 15 seconds. Oh. La hookah in 15 seconds. Ready? Let's go. Three, two, one, go. Prende la hookah, prende la hookah. Should have played some Bad Bunny at this moment in time. Isn't it funny that hookah associated with Dominican culture and uptown and Bad Bunny is the person you think of immediately? You know? Oh, time's up. Pens down. Damn. Damn. <laughs> Damn. That was for 15 seconds? Thank God, thank God I am not an artist. I need um, that. Damn. Yo. I'm not even going to put that one to vote. It's just... Come on, bro. That's a win right there. That's a beautiful. <laughs> Yo. That's a modern show. design hookah, bro. Bro. It's pretty good. YouTube bro, wants hangman. He spent the whole week drawing hookah, so I understand. YouTube wants hangman? There no. you go. Great, <laughs> you understand. When, once you got it, bro, that looks just like the hookah I just did. I just woo, 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 woo. <laughs> Okay, so you, you know, the it just it makes you faster. Hell yeah, the, our next segment is called Distorted Pictures. We're gonna take five images from Ruben's work and we're Ooh. gonna distort the photo. We're gonna display the photo on Justin's screen. Uh, let's see if Ruben could depict what piece of his work it is. Uh, Justin, you got the first one? Yeah, Ooh. let me know when you're ready. Let's I'm go. ready, bro. Get to it right now. Sheesh. Okay. Uh, First one. That is, I believe that's Tate Quieto. Uh, is, is, he, is he correct, Justin? That's the, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Tate Quieto, yeah, that's, that's so the one. Of people relate to that. All Latin cultures relate to that. Tate oh, yes, absolutely. It's a belt or a sandal, if, if it's a belt or a chancleta. They know what that means. It brings me to a few hours ago. Or a switch. A switch. Or a switch. Or a, switch. Or a, switch. Or a phone cord. Or a USB cord. No, or... right, now, right now, the iPhone cord. Especially when you got the extra long one. Yo, son. Yo. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <Sound man>. <laughs> Are you crazy? <laughs> she said. That's the next one for us. Yo, holy crap. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, wow. Ooh, hmm. I like it. I think I know this one. Um, I don't remember the name, but this is a Dominican. Uh, it's a it's a man from a Dominican wearing a Dominican mask from a carnival, and it has like multiple colors. It's a blue background. I don't. And yeah. he's correct. You named that one Rainbow. It's a Rainbow. Oh, See si, Rainbow. Uh, you can't remember that. Yo, that was Good a job. Wild. Rainbow. Uh, Justin, one we have. Three more. Let's go to the next one. Let's see. Ah, oh, you got me on this one. You got me on this one. Let's see. Uh, where? Ooh. Oof. Give him a hint. <laughs> Give him a hint, bro. A hint? Well, obviously, there's red, white, and blue. So there's some flag in there. Clearly. Uh, hmm. There's also hookah in this photo. A, a Dominican. Oh, uh, a fire king. 
And you got that one correct too. There it, it is. Right there. Damn, Justin zoomed it in exactly on the Google Play also. Yo, Let's go zoomed, to the next one. He Justin. zoomed it in and got me. I, I would have never gotten it. Ah, no. Nah. <laughs> That's a barcode. Barcode, the matrix. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's the matrix. Hmm. That's a barcode to one of your products. Uh, yeah, for real. Uh, sheesh, I have two. This might be either Desafiante I, um, hmm. or What's Going On. It's one of those two. Uh, um, which one is it, Justin? Desafiante. I'll, I'll say Desafiante. There it is. Boom, you got it right. You got it right. Yeah. And knows his work. Last one. Oh, this is um, a Corona Exchange. Yeah, I, I know those colors too well. <laughs> this one was on the cover of Man Times, right? This yeah. is one of the, I think there's been like two or three that. Correct. So this was the first one that got in the, into the cover of Manhattan Times. And this was when, uh, I'll tell you the story about this one. So the story about this one was when I found out that the Latino community up in Uptown was the most affected at that point in time uh, by COVID. And then I had, I gotten off a call with my mom and she had told me that a lot of the older church ladies from a, you know, my home church when I was growing up, I don't go there anymore. Um, but a lot of the older church ladies uh, had gotten it or passed away. Um, and I, yeah, it was, it was, it was hard. Um, but with that, I was like, man, I, you know, the Latino community is very big on faith. Um, Dominicans, like in our name, that's a, you know, we're, it's Catholic. And well, that name comes from uh, Catholicism. Um, so I was like, man, let, let me see if I can come up with something um, to kind of honor them. Um, and it was picked up by Manhattan Times. And I was like, yo, that's crazy. Um, and it wasn't until I went to go get that newspaper that day that I was like, yo, this is nuts that my work is on the newspaper right now. Um, but yeah, it's, it's uh, I think it's a good piece. Did they contact hmm? you before that? What happened? Did they just take the image or did they contact you? Oh, no, they, no, look, no, somos loco. <laughs> they, they, they contacted me, they paid your boy. Um, but okay. It was, yeah, it was one of those moments where I was like, man, you know, um, I feel like the Uptown community needed to be reminded that there's hope, right? That even, even if things go south, right? Like that, that's not the end of our story, right? We're going to be uh, making Coro and Perico Ripiao in, in another place, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So our last segment is called three, two, one. So during COVID last season, we had to switch our show from being an in-person interview at the Monkey Room on 187 in Fort Washington um, to this Zoom via live YouTube. Uh, and we would always end by asking three things that you're watching, two things you're listening to, and one thing you do to, to keep your sanity. So three, two, one. This is the three, two, one segment. Okay, so three three things that I'm watching, two things that I'm listening to, one thing that I'm doing to stay sane. Yeah. Right. So and listening can also be a, a, a audio book, by the way. Oh, okay, cool. So, so three things I'm watching. I'm watching. Uh, I'm watching Community on Netflix. Hey. Uh, so I don't know if you guys. Yes, yeah, 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 so I've, I've been watching a lot of Community. So I I used to watch that uh, in high school, and then I introduced it to my wife she never saw it so i get to see it with somebody who's never seen it and it's just that show is genius um so i'm seeing that uh i'm watching a, a lot of moana so the movie moana because my son <laughs> i have a son I watched yeah. it any i've watched lion king a couple times yeah. but uh i have a feeling i'll be watching a lot more disney movies bro oh, yeah. bro Coming we got soon. disney plus we got disney plus uh when it first came out so we're watching a lot of that just because he likes the, the the rock character Maui. Yeah. yeah. Yo, el encanta ese tigre. That's his joint. Uh, so he'll he'll rock run around the house just screaming Maui Maui, and then we'll put that. <laughs> um, and then after that, I'm just watching a lot of videos, like art videos, right? So I'm looking at the process of uh, Takashi Murakami, uh, Mr. Doodle, guys that kind of have similar uh, styles that I do, and they, they're out of space that, I, that I'm aspiring to. Um, so uh, those, those three. 
in terms of things that I am listening to, uh, I am re-listening to Lupe Fiasco albums like crazy. So he's my favorite hip hop artist. Yeah, so Lupe, I'm a big Lupe head. Um, and then in terms of other things that I'm listening to, I, I guess political news, just trying to be informed, trying to understand what the heck is going on, even though I feel like I, I still don't understand what's going on. Um, and then one thing I do to keep my sanity. Uh, I don't, like I'm a, I'm a very bad texter. I was a very bad texter pre-COVID, right? Mm -hmm. um, but now during this time, I try my best to be as removed from social media uh, as possible. So Twitter, uh, IG, I, I get on IG only to post stuff for Art by Darío and to like my my wife's stuff, you know, because you, you, it's part of the marriage contract. I have to like, have to uh, like the pictures. Everybody else but you likes my pictures. Oh, Jayla, ah, ditto. I feel like I'm, it's deja vu, gosh. I'm, yeah. But, uh, you know, I have to go on there to, to like the pictures and watch the stories. But I try my best not to be on social media. Yeah. Nah, Ruben. What happened? <laughs> You're going to see it. She's within earshot. So if she can't, <laughs> she's probably yeah. listening. Um, but, yeah. Go back. Go back. Let me no, go ahead. Go ahead. That's Clarence. She's our photographer. Yeah. It's his birthday today, by the way. So oh, Happy birthday, Clarence. Happy birthday, Clarence. Hey, Clarence. Happy birthday. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's just staying away from social media or taking breaks from social media from time to time so that I'm not lost, you know, just getting angry at random people that don't live near me, don't I don't even know them, and you're just getting tight for no reason. And at that point, it's like, wait a minute, <laughs> let me just chill and go eat some confle or something because this just this is a waste. Oh, of time. I, um, you mentioned Mr. Doodle. I want to like focus on that because that dude. Is the one of the most amazing dudes to me. Mr. That, Doodle is awesome. And like, I just can't explain. Like, I, if y'all don't haven't seen it, please look it up. Um, I'm obsessed with that dude. Actually, he's part of my self care. Sometimes I just sit and watch Mr. Doodle videos for like 15 minutes just to get my composure. You know what I'm saying? Like that shit is. Amazing. Yeah, bro. I I love Mr. Doodle a lot because him and another artist named uh, Kim Kim Jungius. Uh, he, Ooh, I love that dude too. You know, Kim jong is bro. So those two, even though their art styles are completely different, what they mastered, what they're mastered in is being able to draw on sight. Like they can oh. just, you give them an ink pen, bro. Nobody can pencil. Just memory, paper. bro. Like, just memory. Just going at it. And I think like that's that's what I aspire to do with, with my stuff. I, you know, even, even like in our little challenge with Craze, right? Like I felt kind of hyped because I'm like, oh, man, I'm getting fast. Yeah. Bro, that's the reason that I'm, I'm telling you, like, I understand exactly what you're talking about because yeah. that that's a very thing about, like, creating, you know, like, the, the ability to, like, just call call upon that shit. Mm -hmm. ah, like, yo, somebody's like, yo, draw a gun. And you're just like, gun? Boom. <laughs> <laughs> yo, bro, and, and that's the thing with, like, Kim, he, you, I, I know, Craze, you've seen it, but with Kim, bro, he'll draw me from memory and it's just like local you don't need a pencil you don't want to sketch me out you're just doing this with a pen then, um, and and when you when you see that kind of level of expertise and like a mastery of somebody's craft it inspires you it inspires you to do better uh be better and, and just push through for sure bro That's so dope. if you have one message to give to inspire somebody who's working right now in a law office as a paralegal and is drawing on his legal pad while he's doing some motions that he freaking hates his job. Uh, at a Bank of America writing on deposit slips. Oh my um, gosh. Drawing on the deposit. <laughs> Do you want me to replace your debit card? Yes. So yeah. what, what would be that piece of advice you give uh, an aspiring artist? Uh, I would say don't give up on your dream and listen to the people around you. Um, I think, you know, if they love you, they'll tell you the truth about your talent and they'll tell you that, again, you should listen to them more than you should listen to your insecurity. I, I feel like a lot of people stop themselves and you would think that in this world, right? Like the reason why people don't achieve their dreams is because of some outside source, right? Something that happened or somebody stopped them or, you know, yep. uh, got in their way, right? But 
I think the reality is most of the time what stops us from doing what, like our, our reaching our full potential is us, right? Mm -hmm. Our fears, our insecurities, our, you know, our lack of belief in, in our own ability, right? To do the hard work and to believe that you can actually see something come from it. So, you know, to the dude who was like me or the, or the girl who's like, who was like me, um, and who's in a, a dead end, not a dead end job, but a, a dead end career for them. Um, Something and, that doesn't fulfill them. Yeah, it just doesn't fulfill them. I would say, hey, you know, it's better to cut it, cut it off now and deal with, you know, like starting from scratch and, you know, sheesh, because it's, it's, it was a risk that first year when I dropped it, it was, di yeah. it was difficult, right? I, I was a married dude with a child um, and I made that decision. So if you have the ability, if you can, if you're single, do it. Like you don't have an excuse. If you can. <laughs> oh, Zero excuse, just do it. Um, but if you're, if you're married and you have a, you know, a, a partner who says, Hey, I'm, I'm here, I'm your ride or die. And I'm, and I'm willing to see this through because I believe in you. And I know that you can do this. And then you have people around you who are like affirming the talent and the gift that you have. Then at that point, it's like, no one's stopping you. Everybody's giving you the go. It's just you. So you just got to do it. I want to thank Ruben Dario Ramirez for coming on to our show. Thank you, man. Uh, oh, I want to thank awesome. you also for uh, the pieces that he's done the last couple of months. Um, the first one that I actually saw was the Lechon. Uh, and then from there, oh. I just kept following you and, and seeing your work. And I loved it. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Who put you on, though? Tell them. Trey's gonna pretend like. Oh, here we go with this debate. It's like I a I Trey, Trey, I love you. Your artwork is dope. Continue drawing. Uh, I want to say happy birthday to Clarence. He just joined us. It is his birthday today. Um, I also want to congratulate Camilla Harris. She was elected as no. she was picked as Biden's VP. Uh, I thought that was huge. I didn't mention it earlier because it's about Ruben. Uh, if you haven't seen his stuff, he also sells merch. Um, Absolutely. Art by Dario. In, yes. It's on Instagram. Yes. So, uh, and all the links to my merch and prints and stuff like that is on my bio. You can check it out there. Hi. Also, he's on on our Instagram page. So if you can't find it, uh, also send me a DM. I'll, I'll send you the stuff. Ruben, thank you for coming on. It probably won't be the last time you're on this show. Let's hope not. Thank you guys so much. It was a joy. Uh, I Honestly. would like to extend an invitation to the trap loft when this COVID thing is over. Uh, yo, yo, I'm down. Dude, you said it was a 187? I got some paint right here. Oh, I got some canvas. Oh, oh snap. I, yo, I, need a, I need a blank craze. I need a blank canvas. Me and you going to get work. I got some stuff is in the Bronx, and that's Crazy's art studio. So, uh, got a lot of work. You see the Lechon in the back. All I'm interested in is the canvas and the who connects to you. All right. Hey. <laughs> I got a guess to Fuego. So crazy known as the hookah god. So yeah. Uh, I want to thank you for coming on the show. We're going to go live at 8 p.m. with Jen Carlos, the actor, songwriter, singer. Um, that should be dope. So stay tuned for that. We'll be back at 8. Ruben, thank you for being on, my brother. I appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much. Good luck with everything. Thank you guys.